Hi, welcome to Beer Banter. My name is Mike. I'm Matthew. And today we are going to be doing a, another Saison. Uh, last time we did the Lift Bridge Farm Girl Saison. Today we're going to be doing a very classic uh, beer example, the Saison Dupont. So the colloquial is Saison Dupont. It uh, comes from Brasserie Dupont uh, in Wallonia, um, Belgium. So this is where Saisons originally have been dubbed to be coming from, uh, hence it's farmland and just being just over the border from uh, France. So uh, VA Provision Saison from Brasserie Dupont is its full name, but we just call it Saison Dupont. Cool. What do we got for vitals on this beer? Uh, you know, what I've got is about is 6.5% alcohol, and uh, we're going to find out a little bit more about the color and, uh, and the bitterness. I know that it should have a little bit of bitterness, but nothing was provided. Sure. Should we just crack into it? Let's, let's, let's do this. Let's <laughs> see if I can get it off with the, without the corkscrew. Oh, yeah. So, a highly effervescent beer. I'm hoping this thing's not going to gush all over. Beautiful. It's staying put. So, uh, we chose to go with the 750 um, milliliter bottle. This is a classic way it's imported. It also, I think it's done in 33 cell liter, cell liter bottles. Mm-hmm. And so what we're going to be doing here, I'm going to transfer this glass right over here. This is a bottled conditioned beer, which means that there is still going to be uh, dregs or particulate matter from the yeast that is left in the beer. That's by intention. Uh, the bottle is going to be finished off in its uh, uh, secondary fermentation inside the serving vessel. So uh, for those of you who are going to be drinking uh, uh, bottle-conditioned beers, uh, make sure that you, when you serve them, uh, you serve them at kind of a level playing field. Get as much of it into each glass before setting it back down as you can, because when you set it back down and then re-pour it, those dregs are going to be brought up into the beer, and those uh, it's it's gonna you're gonna be able to see little particulates floating around in the beer. Yeah. That in in possibly uh, haze is common too. Uh, right off the bat, great, uh, wonderful rocky f- uh, head. It's just huge, yeah. huge bubbles producing this massive head. There is a volcanic eruption of CO two bubbles being uh, displaced in yeah. to the top of the beer. Um, I wish we had a secondary... All right, case in point, uh, we're going to get a secondary camera so we can show bubbles at some point. We're going to get a little GoPro to go right here Mm. because this is too much fun to watch right now. And you can't see it on the the screen there, so... Well, uh, I believe this head is going to last because it has not moved. Um, Not even a little bit, yeah. Which is okay because I'm just going to get right in. I got a little on my nose, which is always... Wow, Uh, much different than our our, uh, farm girl. Yeah, uh, a little less on the fruit for sure. Uh, still some of that uh, classic Belgian yeast character uh, yeah. I'm getting on the nose. I'm I'm definitely getting a little uh, Britannomyces and and probably a l- almost has it smells almost like a little bit of lactic. Yeah. And and these are all characters that can be uh, commonly found in saisons. They do not have to be, but yeah. I'm getting much more earthiness from this. Uh, saisons are also uh, commonly referred to as farmhouse ales, and mm-hmm. that refers to uh, especially with this classic style. In Belgium, these beers were produced on small farm breweries. Uh, we read that uh, this beer has been produced on the same site uh, essentially since 1844. So, uh, right away, just big fan of, uh, of, of jumping into this beer. Because this is, uh, like Mike said, supposed to be kind of indicative of the style itself. Um, it has got a, a wealth of, of aromas coming off of it, a lot of richness uh, from... The bread of uh, esters and phenols. Mm-hmm. Oh, like I said, a little moments like lactic acidity. Right away, I jumped into almost having like a sour ale here, but ooh. But uh, also, also well balanced by a strong malt profile. Yeah, I'd say like its maltiness is is there, but it's it's sitting behind the yeast for me. Mm-hmm. I get a, a rich sweetness, and I think it's part of it's been coming through with the esters uh, from the fruit, you know, the fruity kind of flavor, but it's like a rich sweetness. It doesn't quite put it, but it's that ripeness. Yep. And it's uh, not quite as uh, sweet, or not quite as uh, fruity in the b- banana, uh, bubble gummy sense as uh, the Farm Girl Saison was. This one to me is a, a much more dry, crisp finish, uh, partially due to the effervescence. Yeah. 
much more dry. Mm-hmm. Um, it has a really clean finish. It's cutting off in a nice sharp, uh, sharp crispness, and that's probably partly of the CO two, partly of this the dryness of this beer. I mean, really get a, this effervescent dry beer. It's almost it has remnants of like a golden strong without mm-hmm. quite uh, quite the level of alcohol. Um, the warming you get. Mm. A little bready fruit on the nose. The mouth mimics it quite a bit, but it sits more on that dry, crisp, effervescent. Yeah. It's sweet, but not fruity sweet. It leads you right back into trying to get another quaff, because that is just drinkable. Very nice beer. I really like a uh, little bit of that kind of the rustic farming. So Mike touched on just it being a farmhouse ale. And, you know, there's two main categories of beer that fall into it. Uh, beer de Garde, which is a French farmhouse beer, and Cezanne, which is often uh, considered to be the Belgian counterpart. Um, you get some of that uh, that kind of farmy, kind of barney flavor, mm-hmm. partly probably with some of the, the Britannomyces that's made it in here and, and just that Belgian... Uh, really ester phenol driven yeast where we're getting a lot of the fruit and the spice on this and there's subtleties they're not huge they're just they're there in a back note to this beer the the head just sticks in there I mean you can swirl it's just this I've drank down nearly half of what was in my glass and that head just won't leave Mm. so I want to touch on a little bit of of the history of the Saison excuse me let me top you off here, bud. Thank you. So, uh, Saison, as Mike said, it has been around for a long time. Uh, this particular brewery has been making it for uh, since the mid-1800s, but Saisons are known for being a farm beer, meaning, uh, or a season beer is actually a Saison's translation, but um, migrant workers would come to farms and help do harvest season, and this beer was a uh, provision for them. It was... It, it was a way to supply them with clean drinking um, consumables yeah. at the same time as um, a libation of sorts. So, uh, Often cleaner yeah. than the drinking water that was available at the time. Yeah. And uh, to, to end your day and have something that you know that was clean, that wasn't going to make you sick, but it was also fun to drink and was this nice, light, effervescent. Uh, I'm just picturing a, a, a Belgian sunset uh, after a hard day's work on the farm. Uh, I wouldn't mind being a, a a laborer on that farm. Beer provided. Beer provided. So uh, the, some of the history of it, basically they talk about it not being a very repeatable beer. It being very different probably from season to season and farm to farm because really they were just making uh, beer with ingredients they had on hand. So the grains, whether it was barley or wheat or spelt, or uh, they had probably a lot of different ingredients from farm to farm. Also, these are not professional brewers. Uh, these, this, these are farmers who, uh, when the farm work's done in the in the off season, for for them is then brewing season, the colder months, and then so they were brewing beer uh, for provisions for the year. Yeah. So, and basically just to use up the grains that they didn't make into other products. Mm-hmm. But what what has come of it is something that uh, beer beer drinkers around the world have regarded as a really enjoyable style that has continued to be produced because of the qualities that people like about it. So we mentioned that area in Wall- uh, Wallonia, um, Belgium, it borders France. Uh, it's on the southern part, and uh, it is French-speaking, but they have qualities of French's very non-traditional when it comes to beer, um, as well as Be- or Belgian's non-traditional parts as well. But it's also part near... F- um, uh, uh, it has that French kind of Belgian cross. So it has mm-hmm. little counterparts of both of Belgians using whatever ingredients they have, like whether it's uh, fruit, orange peel, uh, flour, flowers, or um, even different, you know, malts. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, something that's different about Belgium than uh, Germany, which are some of the styles that we have tried before, is that uh, Belgium never had a purity law that was imparted on them in which they, they had restrictions on what they could put in their beer. They, the, the, the playing field was wide open for whatever they wanted to experiment with, and experiment they did. Mavericks of Bruin. Absolutely. <laughs> mm. So if you get a chance to, to get out and find the um, Saison du Pont, 
it is fantastic. It really is a clean, dry beer. Uh, again, I could have this whether right now it's uh, later in the the winter or it's dead summer. I yeah. mean, this is a drinkable beer. If, if, if chilled properly, this would be highly enjoyable mm-hmm. in the summertime. 